So, over. Here we go. Um, you know, like I said, we, we talked about it yesterday. You know, waiting. Waiting for the right moment. Waiting for when you're feeling great. Waiting for that perfect moment. Um, well, I think every moment can be perfect. If you just think it and act it. Um, and today I was really excited to get up and make you this video. Even though I'm not feeling well and I woke up twice in the middle of the night because of Matt, I'm going to make you this video and it made me happy to think about making it for you. Um, and I was like, but I have a cold, I should wait till I'm feeling better. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to try to, you know, realize my dreams. And maybe the dreams that I have are just small or whatever, but it makes me happy and it makes my life more fulfilling because I fulfill what I want to do, what I'm curious about, what I'm, you know, what I'm passionate about. Like I told you, I always wanted to make a video blog for myself and my friends, just talking about life and sharing with other people. And because I've learned so much from strangers on YouTube or, or articles I've read on the internet, maybe if I find some people who are like me, who are on a journey, because life is a journey, you, you never arrive. Even if you arrive somewhere, you always have to go somewhere again, right? And that's life. Um, so I really enjoyed talking to you yesterday. Um, I wish we could do that in person soon. And like I said, I wanted to show you this book. Um, maybe you've seen it. This guy, I, I saw on, on the internet yesterday that there is a, a story from this book um, in English on the internet. Some people have read this book and has sort of translated one of his um, fairy tales. I don't know if he wrote the fairy tale himself, but it's called, in German, Neun in Neunzig Kreis, or in English, The Circle of 99. The story, this story is the last story I wrote, uh, or I read, I think it's in the middle of the book. And for some reason, that's the old, uh, one that sort of stuck in my mind because I think it, you know, applies to my life. Uh, so I'm going to tell you the story. So there's a king. He's really rich. He has everything, you know, what, what a, a fairy tale king has. Riches, castle, beautiful wife, children, beautiful silk clothes. You know, no one can, you know, people rarely get to um, try. And he has a page, a servant, that serves him every morning. And the king was wondering about this. Um, this is my version, so if you read it and, 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 and it's not like what you've read, this is how I understood it the first time I read it, and that's, I only read it the first time. Anyway, this servant is always happy. He's singing and, and um, smiling every morning that he serves the king. And the king one day asks him, Page, what's your secret? And the page is like, what do you mean? What secret? Um, your secret, you're always happy, you're smiling, and I mean, you eat the crumbs off my table, and you're happy, and you're smiling, you're singing all the time. What is your secret? If you don't tell me your secret, I will have you skinned alive or, and, and, and behead you. And the page is like, well, you can do that, but I don't have a secret of my happiness. It just, I'm just happy. Uh, and the king's like, why are you so happy? And the page is like, well, I have a house, doesn't look like yours, but I have a house, I have a wife, uh, I have children, I have food, and sometimes when you give me a little coin, I get to buy something special for myself. What is there not to be happy about, you know? And the king's like, that's ridiculous, how can you be happy? I mean, you know, that would make me happy. You know, the page's like, well, it makes me happy. And, you know, so the king sends him away, goes, that's ridiculous, you know. And so he calls the, uh, the court wise man over. And he comes, he's like, yes, your majesty. He's like, you know what, my page, he eats the crumbs off my table, and this man is happy. He says he has no secret, you know. Um, the, the, 
the wise man's like, well, you know, it happens. But if you want to see him other way, I know an experiment. And the guy's like, the, the king's like, well, okay, what is it about? And the wise man says, it's called the Noiru Noisi Kais, the circle of 99. And then the wise man says, um, if you want, you could put him in this experiment, but you have to understand that your page will never be the same again. He will never be happy again. You'll never see him smile or, or, or sing to greet you. Are you ready for this experiment? And the king's like, yes, he's really curious. So I think that night, uh, and the wise man had told the king, you need to bring 99 gold coins. It, not more or less, 99 coins. Okay, and so they go out to this guy's neighborhood and they're watching his house and um, they wait for the morning. They see that, you know, one candle goes up at around six in the morning or something like that. And, you know, the day is as usual. And the, and the wise man says, okay, so we're going to put this bag of coins in front of his door with a note. The note says something to the effect, uh, this money is for you because you're such a great man and you're welcome to spend it the way you want. And they sneak in, in front of the front door and leave it in front of his step, step, steps and knock on the door and they leave and it's higher around the corner. And the, and the page, the, the servant opens the door and sees this thing on the floor and looks down he reads the note, he looks into the bag, and then his eyes just pop open. And then he looks around the front yard to make sure that no one saw it. So he takes the thing and you know he goes inside of his house and the the wise man and the king, they sneak they sneak, you know, in front of the window and watches him what what this guy does with the money. And he's sitting at the servant is sitting at the table. And he's looking at the coins, touching the coins, and just marveling. And his face sort of transforms. He has this intense look on his face. And, you know, I, I read it in German, and angespannt, right? His eyes are like, you know, wow, glittering too. And he starts stacking the coins, you know, and he stacks tens, another stack of ten, another stack of ten, and he has ten stacks. And then he counts each stack. And he comes to the, the last stack, and he realizes that there are only nine on this stack, right? So there are 99 coins. And the, and the servant's like, wait a minute, there are only 99 coins. Where's the other one to make it 100? He looks under the table, looks around, you know, and he's like, I don't have the other coin. And he's like, wait, I have to have 100 coins. And he's like, okay, so how long... Will it take you to get another coin, a gold coin? And he realizes it might be, you know, 10 years. So he's talking to himself so the king and the wise man can hear. And, okay, so it'll take me 10 years to, to earn this gold coin. My wife has to work. Uh, it's summer, so I don't need winter clothes. And I can sell some food that's left over in our household. And in about three years, I can get that other coin. And the more he talks to himself, the king and the wise man noticed that this man's once friendly, good-natured face had sort of transformed into this sort of really intense, worried look. And, um, and, the, and the king and the wise man, of course, they go back. And then, you know, I think a few weeks go by and the king notices, wow, the servant has, has changed. He was no longer singing. He was no longer smiling, no longer sort of amusing the king. And the king says, why are you in such a bad mood? You just being such a jolly fellow. And the man goes like, ah, oh, you know, I don't know. Just, you know, he, he can't explain it, you know. And then, of course, the king and the wise man have put him in this circle. I understood it as sort of a vicious cycle, right? Because, you know, this guy, you, you can't get out of the circle. 
yeah, he can get the coin, but afterwards he's going to want more and more and more, you know? Um, instead of enjoying what he has, he's worried about just making this set complete. But like I said in the beginning of this video, it's a journey. There is no, like, once you arrive, you have to go again, you know? Once you have that one coin, it makes it full, but then he's going to want another one. He's going to have, he's going to want 101, 102, and then he's going to want to round it off to 200. Just like our experiences, we're going to want another experience to fulfill ourselves, you know. Um, so that's how I understood it. And I actually told, I made another video for a friend of mine, and I gave her the example yesterday. I woke up and I was like, wow, you know, I wish I had a really good friend to talk to. And I'm like, wait a minute, you have lots of good friends. What do you... What did you, why did you say that? And I call myself. I'm always, it's unconscious, but things kept coming into my head. And I'm like, wait, why did I just say that? Thank God I can catch myself now because sometimes I do realize, hey, I have everything I need. Yeah, sure, you know, I want other things too. I don't have to have them. I've arrived at a place, yeah, I'm just going to try to consciously enjoy what I have. Actually, I have a lot, you know? Um, so that's, that was my message. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you got something out of it. Well, you don't have to, you know, but you can maybe look it up on the internet and read a different version from another person who read the same story. So I think everybody understands, you know, fairy tales a different way. Um, I really enjoyed it. It's been in my head for a few days now, so I had to share it. So on to you, Missy. Um, I want to know about your life, what you've been doing. And if you want, I would love to see a, a video blog from you to me. Um, I had a few questions for you. Uh, you know, you said that you had that philosopher friend. You know what? I've always wanted to talk to a philosopher. What do you guys talk about? You know? Isn't it sexy talking about philosophy with a man, a good looking man? You know, that's probably like one of the highlights of, um, you know, highlights of having a conversation. Uh, and you said that you did not want to go to New York with time. And I want to know you, why you're going to go if you're not, if you don't feel like going, you know. Um, don't do something that you, your, your heart doesn't want to do, you know, um, unless you can go sort of with an open mind and, and, and open for new, ex new experiences. Um, that's just on my mind. And um, before I let you go, I had a sort of a phenomenal realization last night washing my face. You know, I wrote it down. Um, this video is getting long, so you can maybe watch it in two parts. Um, you know, I watch Korean soap operas, you know that, and some characters really touch me more than others. And I noted, I'm watching uh, a, a soap opera called 100 Year Inheritance, and the main character, the girl, sometimes she makes certain face gestures. And then I noticed a few days ago, I made the same gesture as she did. And I realized, wow, there must be some sort of an unconscious, you know, I don't know, unconscious um, emotion that I, that I connected with, you know, in this character, you know, she goes through a lot of hardships and stuff, and there's certain, she makes certain gestures, right? And I caught myself expressing this, and I thought, Wait, if I watch enough uh, certain, you know, expressions or even videos or even nature shows or whatever, if I watch enough, I will unconsciously start imitating these thoughts or these gestures. And I was like, wait, then I thought, okay, if I start watching people or if I surround myself with people who inspire me, if I do it long enough, maybe I will imitate these people that I really admire, qualities 
I want to imitate 